Hi Dan here, hope you're doing really well today. How do you add soul and sophistication into your playing? How do you sound a bit more professional? How do you sound like your favourite players? That's the subject of this lesson and it's all about expressive techniques. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you six of them. We've got slides, pull-offs, hammer-on, vibrato, ghost note, and bends. And basically, if you know how to play those, you'll sound really good. This is the first bar. There's a lot going on here. We've got an A and an E, frets five and seven of the E and the A string first. Nothing too difficult there. Then we're sliding. There's the, there's the first technique, sliding into the 12th fret D, use your little finger there. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about each technique as we go. You can slide into a note from below it, or you can slide in from above. Yeah, a slide just adds a bit more of a vocal quality. All these expressive techniques do. I think they make you sound a little bit more like a vocalist. So what you do with the slide here, I'm using my little finger and I'm sliding in roughly from two frets lower than it. So the 10th fret, this is the D string. And you have to obviously push into the fretboard the entire duration of the slide. If you come up at any time, the note will stop and the slide will stop. Okay, that's a common mistake. So keep pressure into the fretboard. Okay, that's the first expressive technique. That's the second. This is a pull-off, so... We've got D, C, and then... What you do with the pull-off is this. We are pulling off from fret 10 to 9 on the D string. That's the C to the B. So have the B string fretted already with your first finger. That's the note we're pulling off to. A pull-off occurs from a note that's high going from high to low. So we got fret 10 played with your second finger, nice and curled round. You pluck. And that second finger flicks the string. It's almost like you're plucking, but with that finger, that's a pull off. The pulled off note needs to sound as loud as the first. So you're plucking a C like this, and then you're pulling off. Then the next section, We've got the opposite of a pull-off, which is a hammer-on, where we're going from a low to a high note. In this case, we're going fret 10 to 12 on the A string, the G to the A. Now that's quite a tricky finger to, to hammer down, that little finger there. No excuse not to do it though. Practice this as much as you can and bring your little finger into play and you'll find you can play lots of technically difficult things on a bass. So let's go from the beginning and I'll explain the hammer-on a bit more. So you could isolate that, pull off C to B, and then we got G to A. Now just as we had the, the pull off be as loud as the pluck, now we need the hammer on to be as loud as the pluck. So we're going fret 10 of the A string with a pluck. And you're going from about an inch or so above the 12th fret in this case, and just hammering that fingertip down. If you do it and nothing happens, that's just an indication that you need to practice it over time. Put it down in your practice journal to, to work on hammer-ons. I'll just take a little pause there to show you this, which is another thing you can download free on the site. This is the E minor pentatonic scale. It works over this backing track and I'll show you a little solo ID you can do later on in the lesson. But what you could do is you can take a little shape within this pattern and practice any of these techniques. So let's go from the 12th fret here. You may well know that. What you can do is you can go from the lowest note, the E, 12th fret, E string, and do hammer-ons all the way up. You have a little workout between the first and third fingers, or sorry, first and little finger, and then first and third. I'm just plucking each string and doing the hammer-on. Hammer on, and then again. You do the opposite, go from the top, pull off. I find that harder. You've got to move your
your first finger every time. You can use slides across one string. I'm plucking, sliding, plucking again. Pluck, slide, pluck, slide, either going down or up, it doesn't matter. As long as you know some of these shapes, you can use those notes to incorporate these techniques into your playing. By the way, a slide, you got this, this is a very common way to play a slide on bass. One, two, three. You have that kind of thing. Same technique, finger pressed in all the way until you want the slide to stop. Let's go from the beginning again. That is the most vocal technique of all. It's called vibrato and singers do it a lot. And on bass, it's just like, there's kind of two ways of doing it really here. I'm, I'm using two fingers, third and fourth, second and third actually. Just waving the string up and down again, pressing in. That's a really kind of soulful technique. You can do it just with that little finger and the third thing and the third as well. I love that technique. Again, going back to that shape. Vibrato is very unique to an individual player. Listen to David Gilmore of Pink Floyd and he's just got a, a, a characteristic vibrato that's all his own. And you can vary the speed and the width. Okay, I like to be quite subtle. Do you see what I'm doing there? I'm just taking a little portion of the E minor pentatonic shapes and practicing these things. Hammer on, slide, hammer on again, pull off. Now that's a bend, I've, I've gone a bit further. We will get to that in a second. The next bar goes like this. There's that vibrato at the end. Again, using that little finger, third finger, but we've got ghost notes here. That's a ghost note. It's just when you mute a, the strings or, you know, a combination of strings or one string and then you pluck and you get that ghost note or dead note, it means the same thing. So we've got B to E. And I like to use more than one finger to, to actually touch all the strings so everything is completely dead. And you don't get that, just an accidental harmonic going on there, so. And notice how I'm slowing things down, by the way, this is a good practice technique. There's the hammer on again, between frets seven and nine. Again, seven and nine on the D string. Let's do that without any expressive techniques. Nothing wrong with that, but compare that to this. Next bar. Now there is a bend. So we've got a slide as well, so it's open E's. Little slide from fret 12 to 14. D to E. Now this is the bend. I almost always use two fingers for bends because especially with thicker gauge bass strings, when you do it on a guitar, you can sometimes do one finger, but two fingers gives you a bit more control and strength. You can even put your thumb over the top like this, and I'm getting my second and third fingers almost underneath the string. So pressing in as you normally would fret, but getting underneath and you've got to squeeze in order to bend that note. Very bluesy because we're bending to a flat five, which is a blues note within that minor pentatonic. That's why it sounds really good. There are different types of bends. You've got a like a, a blues one there where you've got like a half step bend or you can give it a bit more to get a whole tone bend. Try that, that's hard. That's a bend and release. You can start a bend without playing. That's the last bar. Hammer on, frets 12 to 14. Two plucks after you've hammered on to the to the A on fret 14. 
another pluck, and then we're sliding up two frets with the same third finger. You might just practice that. I have my thumb basically right behind the 12th fret and I'm keeping it there and just sort of twisting around to get higher. So keep that thumb at the back there. Basically because when you slide back, you're in position. And that's it, that's the whole line. I could play for hours doing that and yeah, maybe you should try that too with the backing track playing. So I hope you got something from that lesson. If you did, can I ask a favour? It's my birthday next month. I want to get to 50,000 subscribers by then and that means I need you to subscribe if you can. In return, you can have that PDF, everything for free. There's no sign up, there's no strings attached. Just go to my site, download it for free and use it. It will help you to get better. I find backing track practice really useful. Thanks so much for watching. I do a video every week, so I hope to see you next time.